a very, very uh, somewhat controversial topic, and I need a little bit more time to prepare for it. So I wasn't completely ready to make that presentation today. So I just I decided to uh, leave off where we left off yesterday, and that is on. Um, maybe using this particular presentation for questions and answers. Um, there's a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam that says that life goes on based on questions and answers. People ask questions and people receive answers. People get answers and then that leads to asking more questions. <clears throat> questions and answers are a way of how people function within the material world. People are asking questions, getting answers, and sometimes not even asking questions, but getting answers anyway. So this idea of questions and answers is also a very essential part of our process of learning. And therefore it's mentioned that uh, questions and answers are foundational for understanding and for getting a clarification on all aspects, both the knowledge and the practical aspect, both of the philosophical and the, the practical activities uh, within the process of pure devotional service. So there is a statement that's made by one spiritual group, a type of Buddhist, the Buddhists, some Buddhists say, uh, there's no need for uh, asking any questions because everything is already given. You just have to be, the word B E B exist, and all answers will come to you. <laughs> so of course we don't say that. <laughs> they say, they say. Asking a question is like digging a hole in the ground and getting the answer is like putting the whole the, the dirt back in the hole. Everything is already there. Yeah, this is the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam 125 about questions and answers. Hmm. But the bodhis can understand things deeper because knowledge leads to questions and questions lead to further answers which give further knowledge and knowledge is a foundation for understanding practically the uh, way to live life <laughs> spiritually and those things that support our spiritual lives such as our material needs <laughs> support in the sense that they must be taken care of or be, the spiritual life becomes a disturbed dis, becomes disturbed mm -hmm. spiritual practice becomes disturbed not spiritual life so um to mirandasya ganajana salakaya chaksu un militam yena tas my shri guru vena maha shri chaitanya manobi stam stapti tam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padantikam Uma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Zarasvati Deve Gaudamani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pasyati Rezatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So let's uh, continue where we left off. And I remember from yesterday's talk, uh, His Grace Diptesh Prabhu had uh, wanted to formulate a question, which he said he would formulate on today's talk. So I think my, that might be a good place to start. If, if Tesh is ready to ask his question. Hare Krishna, Deep Tesh Prabhuji. 
Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Uh, sorry about Hare yesterday. Krishna. Sorry about yesterday, Maharaj. I was in a bad signal area. Yeah, today so, we are... Actually, it was good because you actually can be, begin the program today. This is actually Krishna's arrangement. <laughs> so, Maharaj, uh, on the deity worship uh, and the Achara Vigra uh, dis uh, discussion yesterday, I had two questions. So, the first question was, Maharaj, uh, uh, the deities in the temple, uh, when they are established using Prana Pratishta ceremony, um, and there are certain very strict regulations to worship them. But then we also see sometimes, and over the history as well, that either due to some influence of some attacks, like you know when the Mughals attacked all the temples and things like that, and also sometimes because they fall into uh, not a good standard of worship and some of the temples then become derelict. So in that case, if the worship has to be established as an eternal, uh, eternal uh, practice, then who does the worship? Because I've heard that, uh, I can't remember, uh, many, many years ago, somebody mentioned that the demigods then come and worship. If, 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 if whoever, uh, you know, if we are not able to maintain the standard of temple worship and if it is neglected, then the demigods come and worship the deities. So is that true, Maharaj? I, I never heard that, but did you do you remember where you read that or heard that from? Uh, I heard it in a lecture somewhere from Kartik Chandra Prabhu a few years back. I uh, can't remember. Oh, where, Kartik but... Chandra? Kar Kartik yes. Chandra? Yes. Then you can take it as you can take it as scripture. If it's coming from Kartik Chandra, it's it's solid. <laughs> okay, Maharaj. So because so, so, that's quite mm, yeah, Kartik Chandra is is a walking transcendental encyclopedia of knowledge. Yes. That I can vouch as well, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. I I go to him for questions I can't answer. <laughs> so. I quite I find it quite amazing that the demigods worship, huh? When the humans fail to maintain the standards. It's quite it's so so intimate. So nice. Yeah, because the deity remains the supreme personality of God, no matter what state. So to neglect that would be considered to be a great travesty, because the Lord is there and He remains. And once He's installed and worship has begun, the deity remains the supreme personality of Godhead. So, but he's just not being worshipped, that's all. And the purpose of the Lord's appearance is for worship. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so thank you, Maharaj, on that clarifying. Uh, and the second one, uh, Maharaj, in... Uh, so, we see uh, the worship of Radha Krishna, a deity in house, uh, you know, it, not in a temple environment, but in a house environment. It requires quite a very big level of commitment and a very high standards of worship. So, should we, uh, if somebody is inclined to worship Radha Krishna but they are not there yet, should they then take the instructions and the the okay of the spiritual or the shiksha or the diksha guru before they do it? Because yeah, we see yeah, in so I, many uh, grihas house is that they have got uh, even within the congregation that many have got Radha Krishna deities and I was I, I never asked them but I always think that you know you know do they have to take their spiritual masters in okay guidance before yeah. they do that yeah, yeah for Radha Krishna for sure the standard is like you mentioned it is also meant to be above the other the standards for other forms of deities such as Jagannath and Gornitai. Um, because Radha Krishna worship is actually Vaikuta worship because we can't worship Radha and Krishna in in uh, in uh, Aishwarya Bhav. We worship Radha Krishna in Madhurya Bhav, which is uh, it's not a formal worship. That's Vrindavan. Krishna doesn't appear as the Supreme Lord in the Vrindavan mood. Although he appears in that form, 
and the worship is still in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan or Vaikuntha, where it's done in awe and reverence. And then uh, through purification of the heart, Krishna reveals himself in his mood as Sri Sri, uh, Sri Vrindavan Dham or Sri Vrindavan Nath, the Lord of Vrindavan. But yes, the, the standard is higher and obviously permission uh, I would rarely grant someone permission for that type of home worship unless it's traditional in their family line and they've been doing it for many years now, have been doing it traditionally. Generally, just to take it up surreptitiously or just because you, it sounds like a, the way to worship, I would discourage that. I would say they should worship Jagannath or Gornitai. Because mistakes and, and, you know, any kind of less lessening of the, the standard will also make it difficult for the people to advance in Krishna consciousness. It's not such, deity worship can take you up, can also take you down because there are fences there. More so with Radha Krishna worship. Well, I would say, yes, their spiritual master must give permission and also practical guidance on to determine how what standard of worship they need to institute. And that depends on the paraphernalia they have available and pretty much the level of their spiritual growth thank you maharaj thank you this this clears uh, and one last question maharaj in regards to that we also see a lot of devotees not a lot of but i've seen few devotees who have got shalagram shila from the radha raman temple and it seems that you know the most common story is that they actually go and they have a desire so they go to radha raman temple priest and they request to be given Shaligram Shila and then they get the Shaligram Shila and they worship. So I was also well, thinking that... Shaligrams are also recommended for, for Grihastas. Okay. But those who are situated um, situated uh, nicely in regular devotional service, they have to be something that somebody who's just not beginning devotional service, they have to be established in their practice of devotional service. Shall them also, you have to be careful. There's offenses with them also. And Shalagram, you can do different levels of worship from very simple to very, very complex. Very complex sometimes takes two or three hours a day. Just in one, one time goal two, three hours. That's the most complex, but the simple, you can do it in like from 20 minutes to a half hour. And there's a devotee here in Croatia. He has 3000 shallograms here. He keeps them all in a big, big, kind of like a wooden box that's re really big and more or less situated on a screen and he bathes them all at the same time each day with water. So there's different standards for that. And you, and that you have to really search out to find what level you should practice it on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. This clarifies. And uh, thank you very much for allowing to ask the yeah. questions at the beginning of your class, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Any other questions on any subject uh, matter? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Vrindavan Nath Prabhuji raised his hand. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. 
uh, Guru Maharaj, I have uh, this one question you mentioned yesterday, uh, Panch Ratrika Bidhi and uh, Bhagavad Bidhi. They are same, but they are not same. Like, uh, so what is this Bhagavad Bidhi, Guru Maharaj? Is this like just listening Krishna Katha or like something different? Mm-hmm. Bhagavad Vidhi means Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra Vidhi. And uh, they're not the same. They're, they're transcendental tracks on the, on the same rail train. Two tracks, but each track is different. So the Pancharachri Vidhi is somewhat supportive of Bhagavad Vidhi because that Bhagavad Vidhi is our main focus but we do a lot with pancharatriki deity worship also you can see how Prabhupada established deities all over the world in a very grand way with radha krishna worship many big temples uh, because he knew that uh, devotees needed to come up to the mode of goodness Generally, deity worship is for neophytes, those who are just getting accustomed to the practice of devotional service. But on the highest platform, you also have deity worship, where saints, sannyasis, gurus have their own deities and they also worship. But that worship is different than what goes on as a just a standard. But uh, yeah, Bhagavad Vidhi is just, that's our, uh, there's a particular graft that somewhat illustrates the two categories in a very delineated and way. I'm trying to think where that graph is and you can see the whole thing clearly. It's more like a circle. And then on one side of the circle, you have the elements of Pancharatriki, and the other side, you have the elements of Bhagavad Vidhi. And together, they make one holistic form of devotional practice. Like um, going to holy places, that would be Pancharatriki Vidhi. Uh, honoring the Lord on holy days. That's Pancharatriki Vidhi, like that. Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution. Uh, as I mentioned, yeah, here, regular hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting the holy names, uh, preaching Krishna consciousness. These are all Bhagavad Vidhi. So we should try to aspire for both Guru Maharaj, correct? Like Bhagavad Vidhi uh, definitely. And... For, for Grihastas, they must perform devotional service to the deity. That's a, that's mentioned in Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam in one purport. And Prahlad Maharaj uh, narrates or lists the nine angas of bhakti. And then as he goes, Prabhupada goes through each of the angas. And when he gets to um, Archana, he very elaborately gives descriptions of the process. And then he also concludes that, that those who live in Grihastha Ashram, it is, it is what's implicit upon them to perform their daily worship of the deity. If they fail to do that, and then he says they're, they're, they're falling down in devotional service is guaranteed. Pretty strong statement. So either the, either the Grihastas worship the deity in the temple regularly every day, or they establish home deities. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, you also mentioned, if possible, uh, to discuss more about Alvars in follow-up sessions like Tirumangai Alvars or maybe others. Oh yeah, I could speak on Tirumangai at one point. I don't know all the details. 
how he raised the money in order to uh, construct the uh, you know the temple in Tirupati. No, the Sri Rangam temple. It's the Sri Rangam temple. Yeah, with the seven boundary walls around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting story. I'll need to review my notes on it. And then once I do, I can give a more uh, complete explanation of that particular pastimes because it's it's really interesting. <laughs> it's unique. It's, it's interesting in the sense that it's it's unique. And it's not to be imitated. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Pradams Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Can you hear me? It's Shilpa. I'm, sh I'm not only hearing you, I'm, in, I'm, I'm offering you puja and giving you a garland and uh, whatever, whatever else I can do to uh, continue my appreciation for your wonderful service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so my pronouns to you as Mal Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances also. So my question is Maharaj, um, yesterday you talked about this inconceivable knowledge. And my question is, um, the intelligence always wants to make sense of everything. And how can we be satisfied with this inconceivable knowledge? And well, when do we know to stop and not keep asking, telling the intelligence not to make sense of everything? Well, that, that knowledge that is inconceivable is manifested to the devotee as they make progress in devotional service that is called that is actually transcendental knowledge which is intuitively given it's a matter of realization it's not a matter of intellectualization or any kind of philosophical discussion with it doesn't fall into the category of of prayaksha anumanta and it has some elements of subda in it, but subda can only take you so far. Therefore, Jiva Goswami, he was very uh, emphatic that you have to, uh, you ha before you can understand the absolute truth, you have to understand that it's inconceivable. And the word is a chintya, inconceivable. But that inconceivability is delivered within the heart of the devotee as the devotee makes progress in devotional service. You get to know things. Can you, the way to understand things is that you know it. It's not a matter of like, well, that's, the, that's what I think it is. No, you know it. It's, it's, it's not to be decided, it's to be experienced. It's revealed knowledge. We call it intuitive knowledge, revealed knowledge, transcendental knowledge that descends. <laughs> so you, you can only be happy with the idea that you can receive that knowledge as you make spiritual progress. It comes by way of your spiritual advancement. But you can ask questions. There's no, but there's no limit to what questions you can ask. But then again, can you actually understand the answer? <laughs> That's another thing. Hmm. I, I think sometimes um, I become stuck when I have to preach because if it's inconceivable and we're trying to preach it's so hard to say well it's, it's inconceivable and that's what it is um 
No, that kind of preaching you don't want to do. You want to preach that thing, that which is conceivable. Okay. That, that inconceivable is not for the not for the preaching element. Because it leaves people, like you say, um, questioning more. And, Now you preach within the range of conceivability. That's why you see in preaching, there's a lot of practical examples that are being used in order to illustrate the philosophy in a, a more easily understandable way. For instance, if you want to if you want to nourish the body, you put food into the stomach. And from that, the digestion works and distributes the energy throughout the, the physical system. So that, that's an example to say that when you, when you glorify the Lord, then, and then everything becomes uh, glorified. In other words, everything becomes wonderful. When you serve the Lord, who is Mula, who is the root, then that is the, that is the, there's no need to serve anyone else. Because service to the Lord means service to all existence, because the root, the Lord, the Lord is the root of all existence. So using that example, so that's a, that's the way you would preach using an example. Mm. I understand that, Marge. So this, okay. So inconceivable knowledge. If you don't understand, it's okay to ask questions because I remember in my early days, it was. Um, sorry. How could there some things you just can't understand? Can you understand Lord Brahma has four heads? Where do you reference that to? You just accept it, that's all. Have you met anybody with four heads? No, so where's your reference? <laughs> Not in this lifetime. To? Okay, good. Uh, maybe <laughs> coming. Yeah, so how so you have you accept it on based on authority. Authority is the principle for understanding. Because when you accept Krishna and Krishna's pure devotee as the authority, you're getting that knowledge. If you accept the wrong authority, then you get something else. So everything's based on authority anyway. All knowledge comes from an authoritative source. Whether it's written or spoken, it comes from an authoritative source. If the authority is not there, then the knowledge is not correct. Thank you, Maharaj, for this. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, there is a question on chat um, by Devananda Pandit Prabhuji. Um, he is asking, Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. In the 11th chapter of the 11th song of the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, verses 29 to 32, Krishna describes to Uddhava the qualities of liberated souls. In particular, he says that such a person is Jita Sadguna. By spiritual knowledge, a devotee is able to conquer the pushings of hunger, thirst, lamentation, illusion, old age and death. Can you explain what conquer death means? Your servant Devananda Pandit. Yeah, that's easy. The soul is immortal. Nahanyate hanye mani sarire, the jo nicho shashvato yampara no. Nahanyate hanye for the soul, there's neither birth nor death, nor having once been, does he ever cease to be. 
unborn, eternal, primeval, undying. He's not slain when the body is slain. The soul never takes birth, and the soul never dies. The soul is immortal. To come back to your immortal state of existence is what is being said there. You attain immortality. You come back to who you are, pure spiritual existence. The body dies, the body is created, the body goes through changes, the soul is not, doesn't go through changes and does it's not created or does it cease to exist. Immortality is your nature. <laughs> you are immortal. On this, but don't, you can't, it, it doesn't apply to this body and you're not the body anyway, so. So when you realize, when you get self-realization, that I'm part and parcel of Krishna eternally in devotional service, you can attain to the state of immortality. And characteristic of that is that when you're about to leave this body, you, you know, well, I'm giving up this body and soon I will go to my next situation. And because I'm a devotee, I will continue my service to Krishna wherever he places me. Mm -hmm. Just like we change garments, the body, the, what is that? Vasamsi Janani Ataya Vidhaya Tato Tavanam Samyani Ayani Devane Dehi. Go to that verse. It's uh, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 22, I think. 222. It's an interesting verse. Vasamsi Jarnani Vyataya Virhaya Navani Granati Nao Paranita Tasari Rani Virhaya Jarnani Anani Samani Navani Dehi. As a person puts on new garments, giving up the old ones, the soul similarly accepts new bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. And so it just explains the difference between the body and the soul. That's all. So just like you change clothes, and when the clothes get old and you give them away or you throw them away out and gives it up and then gets a new one <laughs> so immortality means no more no more new bodies <laughs> you, you stay in your spiritual existence Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, hope it answers your question, Prabhuji. Yeah. Um, we are not this body. We are not the body we inhabit. We've had so many bodies. Which one is, which body is the one that is you? The one you have now, the one in your last lifetime, or maybe the one in the next line. Which one is the one? Which one is you? None of them. <laughs> They're just clothes for the soul. That's all. Now, that may sound a little inconceivable because we haven't had that experience. But if you've had that experience on some level, you can understand I'm not this body. There are people who can leave their body and return into their body at will. Sometimes that happens to people when they're young. It's automatically like I have one God brother. When he was young, he used to leave his body as a little kid and just float around the room and then come back to the body like that. So uh, we're so tightly connected with this body. We think, oh, we look in the mirror or we spend so much time decorating and fixing and 
treating the body, worshiping the body. We do body puja every day. We think, ah, oh, I'm this body. What happens to the body happens to me. No, it doesn't. It's simply a dress. Mm, that's all. But because we live in the body, it's important. Because we live in the body, it's, we, it's dear to us. We take care of it. But if we're outside of the body, we have no use for it anymore. And then we don't even consider it anymore. We leave it behind. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble opinion. Hare Bhav Diraj. Maharaj, can I worship Gornitai? Like, um, uh, yes, Maharaj. You mean getting deity? No, 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 I like it. I just have photos of Radha Madhav and Nashi Uh I'm not sure. You, you, you have deities already? No, I don't have deities. All right, then, uh, you know, practice for a little while longer and get fixed in devotional service with chanting and reading and, uh, and hearing and, and doing some saving. Well, then after some time you can you can get the it's not recommended right away because you want to, right now it's better to focus on uh, hearing and chanting and learning the philosophy and learning to practice like that it, it's it's just a process that we usually take step by step DDs don't come right at the beginning usually they come after some time Yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But uh, you can set up an altar with pictures. Yes. You can set up an altar with picture, though. You can have pictures of, of deities there. And that's good. But the actual deity, a little while more. Second okay, question. Maharaj. You said you have another question? Maharaj, one more question. Yes, Maharaj. That, uh, I'm only single devotee in my house. My parents are not uh, non devotee. So it's very hard to deal with them. Like They always uh, oppose me, like, why you <laughs> chant so much, go to temple? And <laughs> yeah, like, I read. When I uh, do my sadhana, uh, they like, they, why so much? <laughs> they say, so how to deal with them? Like I, I gave them lots of Mahaprasad. So, uh, so they are now like, not excessive, but they are opposing like, why so much Bhakti? <laughs> Because bhakti is is joyful. <laughs> it gives it gives happiness, gives knowledge. When you find something you like, when you find something you can experience the happiness from, you give it more and more time and energy. That's like bhakti. So they can't experience it until they actually do it. If they do it, they will also get some experience. So you can also tell them that you try it also, and then you can decide whether it's too much or not. <laughs> Encourage them. Yes. Well, yeah, they, they can't understand, so let them experience it first. Like I prepare lots of Mahaprasad, and uh, when I go to temple, I bring Mahaprasad. So I, I give them, and now they're not much, but they are opposing. Like, why so much bhakti? This is not your age. <laughs> bhakti is for old age. 
<clears throat> not for this age like so i i give give them example I, like prahlad maharaj and all that's but that's, this, that's a myth that's a myth these are all philosophy don't uh, the like <laughs> how to deal with that mm-hmm. like i give examples but they don't understand just give them some prashadam and ask them to chant if if they can maybe they can chant a little bit they'll get they'll get some better understanding my sisters are chanting bro like the mother they are chanting one round like i have preached them so both of my sisters they are chanting one one round but my mom and my dad they are not chanting tell them if you chant chant the uh, they'll understand more <laughs> true yes, because sir. you know born if you're born in india you have sukriti and it's just covered so as soon as you scratch a little of the surface you can experience so they will they will get some nice experience if they practice for a little while but they'll never understand if they just question that's all <laughs> keep feeding him the prashadam and just say jap karo <laughs> yes ma'am jap karo ei neche asari maya nasi bara lagi hari nama maha mantra lao tu mi magi ei neche asari maya nasi bara lagi hari nama maha mantra lao tu mi magi I have brought the medicine in this age. That medicine is Hari Nam Sankirtan, Ratin Jan Milo K Ne Upai, Rajendra Nanda Na Yeh Sachi Suta Hoy Lo Se Balaram Hoy Lo Nitai, Dina Hina Chatta Chila Hari Nam Udarila Tar Shakti Jagai and Madai. So you can sing to them the Bengali bhajans, and they will. find more happiness and <laughs> yes we have so many nice bhajans <laughs> yes ma'am thank you so bhajans, much bhajans to radha krishna bhajans to gorinda time bhajans to the great acharyas <laughs> bengalis they like bhajans <laughs> yes ma'am Uh, I I yeah. play bhajans and like my mother's like sometimes she she like dance like something uh, her feet like <laughs> feet goes up up and down so some so I I whenever I'm there in the house I play bhajan so like <laughs> they like yeah so there you go there's the trick <laughs> yeah. and you can learn to play harmonium and then you can make a nice bhajans i can play kartal guru maharaj i can play kartal i cannot play i don't have it yeah yeah kartal is good but if you can play learn harmonium then you can sing nice bhajans yes guru okay best Thank wishes for the krishna jai ho hari krishna hari krishna devotees any more questions um uh, guru maharaj i have a question guru maharaj um when we were talking about uh, deity worship uh, um i heard in one lecture that uh, we have to treat uh, gornitai deities as our children and uh, um jagannath baldev subhadra mai as our as the masters of the home house so is <laughs> <laughs> i'm laughing because so many people come up with so many ideas you know <laughs> even i i heard it for the first time and uh, i couldn't uh, i was confused like <laughs> why they are saying like god it i uh maybe um i don't know guru maharaj that's why i thought of asking <laughs> yeah, you, the deity is the is the proprietor of the home mm-hmm. whether it's gornitai or jagannath or 
Radha Krishna or Lakshmi Narayan or Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman, they're the proprietors of the home. Treating, treating them as children in the sense that we wake them up, we put them to sleep, we give them boga offering. We do, we do, uh, sometimes we also dress them. So in that way, we act as like a parent to a child in that sense, but we don't treat them like children. <laughs> we, we, we are serving God in that mood, that's all. Yes. Yeah, when they mentioned, especially like Gornitai as uh, that uh, children are, and um, Jagannath Baldev Subhadramaya as masters. So I, I was thinking like why there is a difference. <laughs> so we, we have to treat everyone yeah. the same, I think. They are the protective, as you said. It's somebody's idea. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to Krishna consciousness, you can't speculate. Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Devotees, any more questions? I think um, there are no more questions, Guru Maharaj. We have okay. Minutes, uh... Tomorrow's class is with the Harrisburg devotees on first canto, sixth chapter, tw verse number 21. Yes. And Friday, we'll try to do the Ahimsa Milk presentation. And yes. um, we'll also do one presentation on the Alvars, Tirumangai's pastime. Those of you who like exciting pastimes. This is very exciting. <laughs> yes, definitely. Good yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. My obeisances to everyone. Vanchakalpa Tarugas Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhaiva Cha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Gaur Bhaktavinda Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai Shila Prabhu Bhari ki jai Guru Maharaj ki jai Thank you so much Guru Maharaj for your valuable association and time and a nice question answer session today Thank you so much Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Thank, Thank you. you so much